Google could be exploiting one of its products that you're probably using right now. According to a new report, the company's Chrome browser that accounts for more than half of all desktop internet traffic has been getting suspicious updates. The new code gives the software permission to use the device's microphone and it allows it to record audio. Essentially, it means Chrome can hear you without your permission. Well, uh, what on earth is going on? Hopefully, we can talk to a man now who might know. He's uh, Rick Forkvin, who's uh, also the founder of the Swedish Pirate Party. Thanks very much for coming on to the programme tonight. Um, first of all, when did you realise something suspicious is going on with Chrome? I was, I was reading a very technical bug report on uh, an operating system known as Debian, and I, all of a sudden I realised what, what I was reading. Somebody had realised that Chromium, the uh, open source version of Google Chrome had downloaded a black box that, and this black box, according to itself, said microphone yes and audio capture permitted yes. So, from all intents and purposes, it seemed that this black box was actually listening to the, listening into your room. Now, there are a lot of technical nuances to this, and it turns out that you actually need to enable some modules for that to happen. But the end result is there. Google is building a listening network that I think is cause for concern. And just to clear something up for the viewers there, you mentioned Chrome U. What's the difference between Chrome U and Chrome? It's, that's an excellent distinction. When you're downloading Chrome directly from Google, you are downloading a black box already. You don't see what's in the box. The box can do pretty much whatever Google wants. However, when you're using a free software operating system, an open source, such as new Linux or Ubuntu or Debian. These have an audit process where the maintainers of this operating system look at every single line of human readable code before it's built into compute executable code to make sure that the computer is doing what the, what, what the operating says it is supposed to be doing, not just trusting a blank corporate statement. And this is why it was such a huge deal that Google bypassed this entire auditing process and downloaded a black box onto what was supposedly a secure audited system. On top of that, a black box which had as, as its primary task to enable the microphone, listen to what was said and on certain conditions, send that back to Google for analysis. In this case, enable searches. Oh, OK, uh, and what, I mean, explain that a bit further. What do you think could be the advantage to Google to have a device like this on people's computers? Uh, the, uh, the advantage is quite obvious. I mean, it is, vo voice recognition is coming. Keyboards are going away, Sc screens are becoming smaller, we are getting mobile. It is a perfectly natural development that you're searching with your voice, saying, OK, Google, show me to tomorrow's weather. It is absolutely, by every single means, a useful feature. But it's also important to realize that this means a technical capability to listen to every desktop. It means a technical capability to not just listen to every desktop computer, but also to do so at the identified individual level. They would know that this microphone belonged to Rick Falkwinger. And possibly tailor what they were listening for on top of that. And it's important even more to realize that Google might not be a bad guy here. We just learned that Google was gagged by the NSA for four years over, Jake, uh, over the activist and journalist Jake Applebaum's records. The USA has already taken itself the right to gag the good guys and take over their capabilities. And I think that's cause for concern with a, a listening network like this. I don't believe Google is listening to every room. I do not believe they have the slightest bad intent. But there are other, other shady people in the background that might use this for their own purposes. And I think that's cause for concern, which is why I advocate that webcams need a physical hard shield before the lens now. And microphones need a hard switch that severs the electrical connections. Software switches are no longer good enough.